Good afternoon, I'm Tatiana Lashina and I would like to talk with you about personal control for office lighting. As we design our lighting solutions, we imagine office spaces where people get inspired, where they can unleash their creativity in order to do amazing things. We also imagine sustainable spaces that do not harm to our environment. Today I would like to talk with you about a modest contribution of personal control to this aspiration. I would like to share with you the evidence we obtained experimentally that indicates that personal control in a modern office is both beneficial for people and provides opportunities to be more sustainable in terms of energy use. When we talk about office lighting, personal control, we mean that every person working in an office gets an individual controller to adjust light intensity in accordance with her or his preference. Nowadays, it is much more common to have no control over the light level in offices. So why one would even consider offering controls? It very much has to do with the fact that each of us perceives light in a rather unique way. Sensitivity of different people to the amount of light is rather diverse. You can think of it as a continuum of light level preferences, where some people would prefer levels even lower than 100 lux, while others prefer levels beyond 500 lux. You can also think about it in terms of a distribution of preferences, where some levels would satisfy more people than other levels. But even when we look at the maximum of this distribution, it has been shown that a fixed light level would bring no more than 65% of people within 100 lux around their preferred light level. It means that in an office without personal control, about 35% of people are having lighting conditions that are not optimal. Think about senior office workers who need more light to see a printed document well. There have been already many studies conducted by the academia that demonstrated benefits of personal control, including improved lighting quantity and quality as perceived by office workers, higher environmental satisfaction, improved mood and motivation to sustain on a difficult task, and Jennifer Vage conducted research linking these positive effects with higher job satisfaction and organizational commitment and lower intent to leave. So if the benefits of personal control were so extensively explored already, why do we renew this discussion on personal control? It is very much due to an ongoing transformation when more and more offices adopt workplace innovation and transition from small offices and cubicles to open offices. When lighting design is made for an open office, it aims to satisfy local regulations, in particular to achieve a recommended light level at the desk surface. The arrangement of desks is commonly not being considered and also may change throughout the lifespan of the office. This leads to a common situation when the layout of luminous doesn't match the layout of desks. This creates a challenge since lighting is offered in the manner that is not workstation specific. What is also typical for control solutions in such installations is that luminous would be combined into control groups. In these settings, personal control cannot be offered to allow an office worker controlling the light level at his desk separate from other desks. The type of control that could be offered in open offices are also known as consensus control, meaning that people sitting next to each other need to agree on their light level choice. The question that appears if we consider offering personal control in open office, would the benefits as we know them for personal control of the workstation specific lighting apply to consensus control and outweigh a possibility of potentially creating conflict out of inability of finding a consensus. In order to answer this question, we designed a user field study. An installation for the study was realized in an actual office where office workers were doing their actual office tasks 
during a period of 12 weeks, in the period from September till December 2013. The office in the study was occupied by 14 participants. It was located on the southern side of an office building on the fourth floor with daylight admission and motorized blinds offering protection from glare. In this study, our participants experienced two situations, one in which no control was offered by, but a fixed 500 lux illuminance was provided in the entire office space. In another condition, every participant got a controller for dimming the luminance. The conditions were experienced by all participants in the following order, starting from uh, no control, experiencing it for three weeks, going into the condition when controls were offered and using them for six weeks, and finalizing again without having control again for the remaining of three weeks. This order allowed us to counterbalance the differences in daylight admission throughout the whole duration of the study that covered September, October, November and December. Let's have a look at the results of our study. Firstly, Let's have a look at the luminaire's output distribution during the control period. We see that in about 40% of cases, the maximum luminaire output was used uh, at the maximum level. From our data, we know that two control groups were kept at that maximum level throughout the control period. If we look at the distribution of choices of the remaining four control groups, most of them were within 20 till 50 percent luminaire output. 60 percent output was corresponding to an average of 300 lux illuminance at the desk. Thus, we see that the majority of choices were made for light levels below 300 lux. These choices led to 27% less energy used in the condition with user control than in the condition without controls. How did our participants appreciate the amount of light that was available to them in the condition when they had controls? We measured the level of dissatisfaction with the amount of light on the desk and on the screen. We saw in both cases by conducting a statistical test with our data that the level of dissatisfaction was significantly lower when the participants had control than when they didn't have control. Our participants also evaluated the quality of light to be higher when they had control. Although the size of the effect of controls on the lighting quality is lower than on the lighting quantity, it doesn't come as a surprise. Lighting quality includes more aspects that are outside of the direct influence of the office worker, while the participants had most influence on the amount of light. We didn't measure any effects on the environmental satisfaction or mood. Although no effect, it indicates no adverse effect that could have occurred if conflict would play a role. We evaluated the degree of conflict as experienced by the participants. This graph shows the degree of conflict per participant measured on a seven-point scale. We see that the central tendency was at the level of 1.6, while the score of 1 corresponds to no conflict at all. Thus, we can talk about very low level of conflict experienced. We asked the participants, if they would be to choose between a desk in an office without controls and a desk in an office with consensus controls, as experienced during the study. 10 out of 14 opted for controls. Three didn't have a preference and only one preferred no controls. To conclude, by means of the field's user study, we demonstrated beneficial effects of personal control on lighting quantity and quality as experienced by office workers. We demonstrated that the degree of conflict experienced was very low, and thus there was no adverse effect neither on environmental satisfaction nor on mood. 
we showed that the majority of our participants preferred having control over a fixed light level. We also showed that by means of controls, 27% of energy was saved. Apart from creating evidence that personal control is beneficial even in the context of an open office, we at Philips worked on the technology that would enable tuning the light level in a completely new way. In the past, personal control would mean mounting a physical controller at every workstation. Today, we have a connected lighting proposition that allows to use a smartphone connected to a luminaire by means of visual light communication or coded light and control the luminaire of our choice. It is enabled by every luminaire having a unique code that is encoded into light generated by a luminaire that is also invisible to the eye. The camera of a smart device can be enabled to detect the luminaire code and the control command would be sent to the right luminaire. To conclude, I would like to cite one of the study participants who said, before I had personal control, I didn't really know what to expect. Now that I already experienced it, I do not want to be without any longer. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.